It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. Our guest this week, outside linebacker, John Grenard. And welcome in. John, first of all, it's John and not Jonathan. I think I've called you Jonathan for many, many months. And I don't know when we all started calling you John, but here we are. It's right. John, right? Yeah, it's whatever y'all want to call it. You know, everybody out here, they, they get lazy. They don't want to say Jonathan, so I say John. <laughs> So I, that's what I thought. I thought, well, I, I thought maybe I missed the memo. So I'm yeah. just going to shorten it too. So no, I don't look like I that. missed it. <laughs> so how has your rookie year gone so far? I know it's just been a rookie season, unlike any other for NFL rookies this year, but you know, you've gone through three fourths of the year. What's it been like for you? I know it's been full of ups and downs, but you're out on the field, you're making some plays. Um, how, how are you feeling at this point in the season? Uh, I mean, it, obviously we all know it's COVID has impacted us all, um, but it's definitely different. I, I enjoy every moment of it just because, you know, uh, I would like, like to have a regular season, but this is also um, a difficult season as it is. So, you know, I feel like almost with having an off season um, prior to coming to the game, to the uh, season, it would be a lot difficult. But overall, I just take the little small things that I learn out of, it, you know, learn how to still get in a routine for a, a 16, 17 week season. You know, I'm in mean, college at this point. We're pretty much getting ready for bowl game. And now here we are. We got four more games left. So. Um, to get my mind and get my body right is uh, one thing I definitely just looked up to the older guys in order to see how do they man maintain throughout this whole process, you know, and what they're doing in their free time just to make sure that their mind is fine or their body's fine, just little things like that. So um, it's been difficult, but I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, this this taught me so much, you know, to even have the situation we're in with, you know, losing our coach and stuff like that um, and not having a season that we all were hoping to have. Um, it was also a lot humbling for us, and uh, it was definitely made us work a lot harder and hone in on the things that we need to uh, work on to get us better over the hump. Yeah, just a really an up and down season all around for 2020, and and right. this off season, everything was virtual. It was OTAs, it was rookie mini camp, everything was virtual, and then finally you start getting some reps in training right. camp, and you go out with an injury, which sort of sidelined you for the first three weeks of the season. So. Yeah. What was your mindset at that point of the season? Because obviously you're trying to get healthy, but you're trying mm -hmm. to remain positive. Right. You know, what were those few weeks like for you going through that? Uh, it was it was difficult. I mean, because, you know, anytime you're out from the game, it's, it's something that you've been doing your whole life is going to take make you um, set back a little bit mentally and physically. But my thing was just, you know, I was getting here. Obviously, we didn't have an off season, So reps were limited. And then obviously with me going out with the injury, um, something that I kind of knew or not knew about, but something that I kind of had an idea of already coming from an ankle injury in college. Um, those are one of the things I was like, all right, well, now I got to sit, make sure I deal with this uh, full heartedly and wholeheartedly so that way I can make sure I'm 100 percent when I come back. Um, mentally, it was a, definitely a setback. But, you know, uh, being around the game and seeing how, they, how the guys work, you know, just standing, meeting, staying active, um, it, it doesn't let you get in the slumps. I mean, obviously, you can be worried about your independent goals that you want to achieve. Um, but once I, once I seen the team and how we all just gelled together throughout this whole process, it made it that much easier for when my time was to come back and I'll make some well plays. Well, you did come back, and then you made the most of your opportunities. You got your right. first career sack, your first career yeah. quarterback hit against yeah. the Patriots in that win, and, and Romeo yeah. Cornell said that you were really pumped about getting that sack. So yeah. how does that affect the confidence of a rookie? Obviously, you know you can play ball. You can do some, some things on the field, but to get a sack against a guy like Cam Newton, does that sort of change your mentality at that point in the season? It definitely did. Uh, really, for me personally, um, you know, Cam, he's from Atlanta. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a hometown kid from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and to, to be able to tackle him and I watched him growing up, um, going to his high school games, it was definitely a huge honor. Um, I know he might not like that a lot, but uh, definitely for myself, it was definitely uh, – it was refreshing and a lot of weight off my shoulders in a sense because, you know, they brought they brought me here to, 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 to help the team out and I finally could do something that um, I was brought here to do and help contribute to the team. Um, so it was definitely – um, humbling. It was exciting. It was a rent full of emotions. Um, but now, once that once that happened, I definitely knew that it was time to go back and get some more. So now, that all I did was just make me more hungry to get another uh, another sack or anything I can do to help TFL. You know, uh, it's freeing up one of my teammates. Anything, just being out there is going to be um, fun for me. Well, when JJ Watt was at the podium a little bit earlier, he said every time you step out on the field, it's an opportunity. So, with all of your opportunities, where do you think that you've seen the most improvement in your game? I know it's still early. It's still year one for you, but have you seen some growth or improvement and in, in, in what areas? Um, I think just overall knowledge of the game um, and, and trusting the gut when you when you study film so much and you want to um, you get your tendencies on teams and stuff like that. Um, you kind of somewhat second guess at times because it's almost like it's too good to be true. You know, when you have a test and you study for it so hard and all of a sudden you look at the test and it's like, uh, you're going to just give it to me like that. It's one of those with just trusting your gut and understanding that when you prepare the way you prepare, things are going to happen the way you want them to happen. So, um, sticking with my gut, I think just watching film, I've gotten a lot better. And I obviously just have more confidence. Like you said, after I got the sack, it helped my confidence a lot just to know um, the, the stuff I've been working on is, is definitely coming to fruition. So um, 
I got a long way to go. Um, I love how 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 they how they how they keep me humble. Uh, obviously, with the older guys and the coaches as well. But I just love the fact that we're just still working instead of trying to get to our uh, common goal. I want to get to the the veterans in a second, but you you mentioned watching film and I and after you were drafted, you said something in your introductory press conference. You just sort of said it in passing, but it caught my attention. You said that you had been watching film from a really young age with your dad. And I want to say you said like five or six years old. Oh, yeah. Your dad would make you watch film of yourself. Is that, yeah. am I remembering this correctly? Yeah, you were perfectly correct. Me and my brother, we uh, play rec ball since, well, I started when I was four. He started when he was about six or seven. Um, and from the time, the first year we didn't record it, but the next year after that, we he recorded every single game, whether it was my dad or my sister. They recorded our games. I played running back pretty much my whole life. So I was been pretty much watching film of that. My brother, he played offensive line, so my dad was just working on him with, you know, technique, um, staying low and things like that. So pretty much watching film was a norm to us. As a matter of fact, when if we didn't record the game, I was pissed off because I wanted <laughs> to see, you know, it was good times where film it was really bad, you know, and my dad had to get on to us. And I think that's what helped me get to the player I am now. I mean, it's just – and then with my mom, I mean, she's, she's sitting right there. I mean, even though she might not know a lot about the game at times, but she knows when I'm doing something wrong or I, she knows I didn't give my all or a certain play, something like that. She can tell. So whenever she, whenever they were in the film room, we know it was time to get to it. Are you sort of a film junkie now because um, you've been doing it for so long? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's and it's kind of like it's, it's routine. I mean, when I just it's just something I'll just be randomly just sitting there and I just click on the film and just watch something, whether it's our game or somebody else. You know, it could be a pass rush or offensive tendencies. I just cut it on. I just like watch ball. All right. So you were at Louisville and then you transferred to Florida for a graduate year. What? What do you think you got out of that extra year of, of, of playing in, in college? And why did you at that point not decide to come out into the NFL draft? Right. Um, so back in Louisville, I mean, pretty much Louisville taught me everything I knew. I mean, it was literally when I got to Florida, it was just icing on the cake. It was just my coach, Coach Grantham, at, uh, my defensive coordinator and my position coach. He pretty much was putting the finishing touches on myself pretty much to elevate my game to that next level that where I, I see myself going. Um, but being at Louisville, it was just definitely – um, coming in and red shirting, I didn't play that first year. It was definitely new to me, humbling for me. And that's when I started just to, to look at, look up to the older guys and see how they how they did. We had a, a really good uh, veteran class at that time um, with a lot of guys getting drafted. So I just looked up to them. And then when I got to um, actually that 2018 season when we weren't so good, um, we ended up going through a lot. It's kind of so similar to here. We were lost our head coach, got fired with Coach Petrino. Um, and then we had to go through that season, you know, just understanding how to fight, face adversity. And when I got hurt in 2018, actually it was the first game of my wrist. I pretty much missed it. Well, not pretty much. I missed the entire season. And I was going to come out initially after that season. I was going to be that year. I pretty much played 2018 to solidify my status of what the scouts were seeing. And then um, obviously God had a different plan for me. And I just basically followed it. And once uh, um, I got the call where I pretty much started looking uh, looking elsewhere when that time was coming, um, I had to put myself and ask that question, Where, what school and what situation could I go into that's going to make me, my future um, what I want it to be? And I've seen Coach Grantham had an opportunity down there and uh, with they having two guys leaving. Uh, that elevated my game as soon as I stepped foot down there with, when it came to workouts. I mean, how fast these guys were, how strong these guys were, I mean, how big these guys were. I mean, obviously I'm fitting in with them size-wise, but I had to catch up with the speed, had to catch up with the strength. And um, after day after day after day of just continuously grinding and working, and uh, it, it came to where I honestly didn't know, I didn't recognize myself when I'm out there playing 60, 70 plays straight of no – no breaks or none of that. And to be playing at full strength come fourth quarter, that's when I knew that, okay, I've elevated my game uh, to the to the place where I think that I can go even further from here. All right, so you reunited then with your, your former coach and, oh, yes, and all's yes. well that ends well. What about now here? Because you, you said you you modeled your game a little bit after J.J. Watt or you, mm -hmm. you watched him a lot in college. Right. So what's it like playing alongside him? I mean, he's in year 10, he's still making Man. big plays. What have you learned just from watching another veteran in the locker room? Like yeah, that? it was... Even to this day, you saying that it's still crazy to even see me on the field with a with a with a, a certified gold jacket. So, um, a guy like him, just watching him, how he prepares, you know, um, that's a guy that's it doesn't matter we're winning or losing, he's still foot to the gas. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if we could have won, he's still angry. He still could be thinking about something that happened and he could have done this better, you know. Um, and that mindset there, uh, even though he's he's his own worst critic. And I think that's one thing I like about him the most is no matter what, how many plays he's made, whether he got 100 sacks or 200 sacks or no sacks, he's still going to be going as if he's chasing his first set. Or, you know, if he's going for a run play, he's still playing this run play as it's just a, the first run game. I and mean, he's seen this play multiple times. So how he plays so hard, you know, Whitney Mercer is another guy, too, that is kind of an unsung hero. A lot of people don't talk about him. Um, Whitney's a guy that's respected well around his league. Um, his, his pass rushing skills, he's kind of a uh, – 
he's kind of a, a, a dual threat almost in that he can stop the run and he can obviously, obviously rush, rush the passer pretty well. Um, but now he's gotten older in his game to where now he's digging in his toolbox and to make sure uh, these guys are standing on their toes so they know he might not be the fastest, but you have to worry about this moving and he may hit you with a quickness. You know, it's just guys like that, they, they open up their arsenal so much because they prepare and they, they, they hone in on their craft over on the offseason. And guys like him and JJ um, are people that I pretty much look up to and have been looking up to uh, since I've been uh, playing ball. All right. Now, how about for yourself? You've gotten through a big chunk of the season now, but you got one quarter of it left. So what, what are some goals that you've got just heading into this final month of the season just to put a bow on your rookie year? Yeah, uh, obviously, just I want to stay healthy as much as possible um, and be the great, the best teammate, honestly. I mean, whether I am get a lot more reps or I get less reps, um, it doesn't matter for me. At this point, I'm just trying to make sure that I do everything to solidify what we have going on here and understand moving forward um, how we want to be and how we how we want to finish this season. So um, whether it's 100 snaps or no snaps, I'm going to be going 100% no matter what. So um, whatever comes with it, as far as goals, I haven't really set too many goals for myself. Um, but the main goal I have is just whatever opportunity I get, just take full advantage of it. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks so much for the time and best of luck for the rest of the season, John. Thank you again. Have a good one.